Hello everyone, I'm Jake from Balance Sleep Institute. For today's Balance Sleep interview, we are joined by a very special guest from the sleep industry. Dr. James Mass is a world-renowned sleep expert, consultant on sleep, and best-selling author. Without further ado, let us meet the leading authority on sleep, Dr. James Mass. Dr. Mass, thank you for being here. Jake, it is my sincere pleasure. I love to talk to fellow sleep researchers, and you certainly a noted fellow sleep researcher. Yes. I was originally not in sleep research. Uh -huh. I was in organizational and industrial psychology. Mm. Uh, I had a PhD, and I mm. started my teaching career, which lasted for 48 years. 48 years. Cornell University wow. in upstate yeah. New York in the United States. Great. And I had the pleasure of teaching the world's largest lecture class. How many were I you? had 2,000 mm -hmm. students in my class every year for 48 years. So I had wow. over 65,000 students. Amazing. And I wanted to give lectures on life. Mm -hmm. And a third of your life should be spent sleeping, Great. but there was very little in terms mm -hmm. of introductory psychology mm -hmm. that people would ever mention mm -hmm. about the role of sleep. Mm -hmm. And because college students are one of the worst sleepers, yeah, <laughs> they're walking yes, right. zombies. Yeah, <laughs> very true. I thought, pardon me, that I mm -hmm. would uh, try to give them something about sleep. Mm -hmm. And there was very little in the literature. There were probably 10 to 15 people yeah. studying sleep in the entire United States. Oh. And this was in the late 1960s. Wow. But because I also have training as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. I thought if I'm going to talk about a subject that's kind of soporific, kind of boring like sleep, yes. I better get some films and mm. some slides yes. to keep the students awake. <laughs> yes, right. Because college students mm -hmm. average 6.1 hours of sleep, and yes. to be fully alert all day long, mm. they need nine and a quarter. Got it. So what was I going to mm. do? Mm -hmm. I called up the most famous sleep researcher in the world. <clears throat> His name is William DeMent, and mm -hmm. he was a professor at Stanford Medical School in yes. California. Got it. And I said, Dr. DeMent, I would like to film you because mm -hmm. you were known for one of the two people mm -hmm. that captured people's dreams. Got it. And I want to show my students how you caught the dreams mm -hmm. and what they were like. Mm -hmm. And he said, why don't you come out to Stanford mm -hmm. and I will hook up a student with electrodes oh. and we will catch a dream. Great. And I thought, this would be pretty cool. Yes. So I flew out to mm -hmm. Palo Alto, California, mm -hmm. and he got one of his graduate students yes. wired up with electrodes, uh -huh. 32 in all, okay. to measure eye movements and brain waves uh -huh. and muscle tones yes. and breathing. And about midnight, mm -hmm. he put him in a quiet, dark, cool bedroom mm -hmm. and said, try to go to sleep. And you might think, somebody sitting there with all these electrodes. Yes, right. Uh, they'll dream of snakes or anything yes. else. <laughs> okay. But uh, this is a graduate student, mm -hmm. and he shortly fell asleep. Uh, and we were in the adjacent control room mm -hmm. watching all the channels from the recording electrodes, mm -hmm. not shocking electrodes, <laughs> but yes. recording electrodes, oh, right. going back and forth mm -hmm. and up and down and mm -hmm. up and down. Mm -hmm. And we were watching this for an hour, and nothing was really happening as mm -hmm. he was falling asleep. Yes. And I was jet-lagged, having flown from New York. Uh -huh. And so I started falling asleep, mm -hmm. but Dr. DeMent stayed up. And 90 minutes after our subject fell asleep, mm -hmm. he said, Jeb, wake up. Mm -hmm. He's having a dream. Oh. I said, how do you know that? Yes. He said, he is having rapid eye movements. Wow. His eyes are going right, left, right, left, yeah. up, down. Yes. Let's go in and wake him up and ask him mm -hmm. if he was having a dream. Mm -hmm. So we went in and he said, Steve, what was just going through your mind when you, we woke you up? Yes. And 
having been waking up, he was very groggy, mm -hmm. but he said, I was having a dream. Oh, cool. What was your dream about? Mm -hmm. I was at a baseball game. Baseball game. Watching the picture. Mm -hmm. And he was talking like I'm mm -hmm, talking. Mm -hmm. When you are awakened from a dream, you don't say, well, I was doing yes, this. Yes, right. You're, you're still groggy. Yes, right. And he went on and on about the picture mm -hmm. and what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, go back to sleep. We're going to mm -hmm. try to capture any other dreams you might have. Yes. I walked back into the control room, mm -hmm. and I said to Dr. Dement, mm -hmm. this is the most fascinating thing I have ever wow. seen. What year was it? When was it? What year was yes. it? 1969. 1969. American wow. Thanksgiving on November wow. 25th, 1969. <laughs> wow. I said, Dr. Demand, mm -hmm. well, I later was told to call him mm -hmm. Bell. Mm -hmm. This is so exciting for the rest of my life. Mm. I am going to educate myself to be a sleep doctor. Got it. And I spent the I'm still doing it mm, at 84 yeah, right. years of age. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I spent being a sleep researcher mm. for over 50 years. So over 50 years. Yeah. Wow. So that's how I got wow. involved. Fantastic. And every day there's something new. Mm. And when I go to cocktail parties mm -hmm. and people say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. If I dare say I'm a sleep doctor, mm -hmm. I've got a long conversation at yeah. it because everybody right. says, oh, doctor, doctor, I can't sleep. Yes, or, everyone. what does this dream mean? Mm, right. Everybody has trouble with sleeping. Yes. Everybody doesn't sleep enough. That's right. And they're not bothering me when they ask for help mm -hmm. because I'm proud to say that our industry has gone from 15 to 16 doctors yes. to over 30,000 wow. people in our field right now. Yeah. And you were, of course, <laughs> one of those yes, right. very important sleep researchers. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, great. And uh, we haven't seen you in the media late, lately. And how have you been? Thank you for asking. I have been fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not in complete hiding. I still do a lot of lecturing, yes. even though I'm retired from Cornell. Oh, got it. Uh, I have my own consulting mm -hmm. firm. Cool. I work with a lot of professional athletes mm -hmm. from the National Football mm -hmm. League, Hockey League, basketball mm -hmm. league, a lot of college teams, even so high school teams and yes. middle school teams because mm -hmm. I'm a specialist mm -hmm. in sleep for athletes. Yes. And uh, I do uh, a lot of uh, speaking and mm -hmm. personal consulting, mm -hmm. but most of my time now, yes. I'm not at all retired, mm -hmm. is spent on two things. I was mm -hmm. just made the chancellor mm -hmm. of United Institute mm -hmm founded by Fulbright scholars from all yes. over the world mm -hmm. who thought that online educational courses mm -hmm. from kindergarten all the way through graduate school yes. sometimes were not of the highest quality. Mm -hmm. yes, so right. they decided to get great professors from great institutions mm -hmm. to offer accredited online courses mm -hmm. from kindergarten through graduate yes. school to the disadvantaged, mm -hmm the disabled, yes. and anybody who wanted to finish their education all the way through business school. Got it. And they did ask me to be the chancellor, oh. to be the head guy, yes. uh, frankly, to raise a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And yeah. so that's oh, yeah. pardon me, taking some time. Got it. But I also am writing a new book. Oh, a new book. A new book. Yes. And I'm doing it with a colleague, mm. Joe Barnum. Yes. And we are writing a book called Achieving Success. The Achieving working success. title is Achieving Success, yeah. mm -hmm. 50 Easy Steps and Strategies, mm -hmm. and Your Life Will Never Be the Same. Mm. Short chapters that have a lot of fill in the blanks, a lot of quizzes, a lot of cartoons yes. to talk about topics all the way from setting your goals mm -hmm. to time management mm. to nutrition to yes. exercise mm. to happiness to leadership mm. to creativity to spirituality okay. and we are very excited about this very cool so it's not only about sleep but also about sleep is like one of 20 chapters cool very cool but the important one. Uh, yeah, and the most important one. Maybe. You have to remember to sleep because yes. you have to sleep to mm -hmm. remember. And like you said, uh, you have worked with numerous star athletes. 
as a consultant on sleep? And to which teams or athletes did you provide advice? We provide mm -hmm. advice because these mm -hmm. athletes, some of which are the most famous in the world, they have very little headroom for improvement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're at the top of their game. Yes, right. But there's always that two or three percent mm -hmm. where you can improve. Yes. And true. that's usually mental. Right. And that's usually because they're not getting enough sleep, that they're not at what we call their A game. Mm. So they eat very well, their mm -hmm. nutrition is very well regulated mm -hmm. with anti inflammatory diets. Yes. They certainly exercise enough, yes. but they do not realize that sleep is the third component of the triad for good health. In fact, sleep is the best predictor yes. in terms of its quality of how long you're going to live. Yes. It's a better predictor mm. than exercise. Mm -hmm. It's a better predictor than nutrition, mm. both of which are very important, yes. but nothing predicts how long you're going to live yes. as well as the quality and quantity mm -hmm. of your sleep. So I do work mm -hmm. with basketball players, mm -hmm. football players, mm -hmm. hockey players, yes. figure skaters from all over the world, Olympian, mm -hmm. gold medalist, mm -hmm. I have about 45 that I've mm -hmm. worked with, oh, cool. to uh, riflery people, mm -hmm. uh, to figure skaters, yes. And I'm thrilled because I'm a wannabe athlete. I <laughs> played sports in college, but yes. not the professional quality. <laughs> but to hang out with some of the greatest mm -hmm. athletes in the world yes. is like a kid in a candy store. Got it. Oh, very good. How does sleep affect athletes who are physically active and yet need to maintain good health? Mainly situational yes. awareness. Mm -hmm. The mental aspects of a game. Mm -hmm. Most of these players have all the physical ability in the world. Mm -hmm. But knowing in hockey who's where, where to pass the puck, who's open, who's closed, where to shoot yeah. is very important. Right. And that's cognitive ability and that is entirely based mm -hmm. on how well you sleep. Yes. Also recovery from injury, mm -hmm. immunity to viral infection. Yes. Uh, the rest amount you need when you get off the court or get mm -hmm. off the ice mm -hmm. while other people are skating to give mm -hmm. you a recovery period mm -hmm. is all largely determined mm -hmm. by how well you've slept. Mm -hmm. And most of these teams I work with travel all over the world, mm -hmm. so we have jet lag Got it. as a major issue. Yes, so right. how do you mm -hmm. conquer mm -hmm. jet lag? Yes. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. For example, yes. in the United States yes. and in Canada, mm -hmm. the hockey teams, mm -hmm. the professional hockey teams, had just a small break in their regular schedule mm -hmm. to go to the Olympic Games, the Winter Olympics, yes. that were in Sochi in Russia. Right. To do that, they could only leave 48 hours before mm -hmm. the first game. So she was 11 to 12 time zones away yeah. right. from their home towns in Canada yes. or in the United States. Mm -hmm. Typically, it takes one day to recover for every time zone cost. Yes. So if they didn't do anything about mm -hmm. jet lag, mm -hmm. it would take them 11 days, 11 days. to be in shape, ah. 11 time zones, yes. mm -hmm. to play well mm -hmm. in Sochi. But the Olympics only last 10 days, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> too late. Yes. So we mm -hmm. developed techniques uh -huh. in order to conquer jet yes. lag. How to overcome jet lag. And we, mm -hmm. we did that mm -hmm. through daylight exposure to light, various days before they left yes. at various times, mm -hmm. on the plane, mm -hmm. in the hotels. Yes. And uh, we were able to get them on local Sochi time, mm -hmm. not in 11 days, yes. but in 48 hours. Sorry. We did it with two teams, mm -hmm. the Canadian mm -hmm. National Olympic Team Olympic and the teams. American National Olympic yes. Team. The Americans went over, mm -hmm. followed all our rules of preparation and on the flight mm -hmm. and in Sochi for the first two days, mm -hmm. and they won the first game. No mm -hmm. problem. Cool. They Then they th thought. Yes that they were 
time adapted. Yes. And so they took off the bright daylight mm -hmm. multiple times exposure during mm -hmm. the day, mm -hmm. took off the blue daylight yes. glasses, mm -hmm. and they lost just about every game since. Yes. The Canadians mm -hmm. were religious about this. Uh -huh. They continued yes. to adapt, to use the daylight blocking glasses mm. to stay, in essence, on uh, Korean time, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, on Russian yes, time. Yes, Russian time. And uh, what'd they do? Mm -hmm. They won every game oh. and 36 yeah. gold medals. Wow, thanks to your advice. I'll take full credit <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Hey, you mentioned your new book, and I also read your book, The Power Sleep. Yes. And I remember it uh, was published in 1998. Yes, and it became a bestseller. I it teased people that that was my father. That. <laughs> no, it was right. me. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was I was a young man. <laughs> yes. So informing people about the importance of sleep. And how many copies of a book have been sold so far? Power sleep. Uh, it's been translated mm -hmm. into thirteen languages. Thirteen languages. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it did very well. Mm -hmm. It's up in the hundreds of thousands. Wow. And uh, I bought my first house with the, uh, <laughs> the royalties. <Yeah. laughs> oh, and maybe. so it, it was yeah. rewarding. It, right. it, uh, uh, I'll tell you a funny story <laughs> that I yeah, have sure. not really shared with mm -hmm. too many people. Mm -hmm. uh, when the book first came out, yes. uh, Oprah asked me to come on her program, oh. which is broadcast throughout the yes, world. It's a very popular show. And uh, to introduce the book. Mm -hmm. Now, when books come out, mm -hmm. Amazon yes. rates and ranks the books, mm -hmm. yes. and there are about two million books out there mm -hmm. that they rank. Yes. And when it first comes out in the first mm -hmm. week or two, you might be number uh, 988,321, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. way, way back there. Yes. The number one mm -hmm. slot goes to the best-selling uh -huh. book of the world. Yes. So I was way, way back there mm -hmm. as a new book. Mm -hmm. Within 30 minutes of being on Amazon with yes. Oprah, mm -hmm. which we did from bed, that was not my idea, uh -huh, that uh -huh. was Oprah's. Yes. Let's do the ideal bedroom. Yes. And you and uh -huh. I will get into bed together. Uh -huh. We'll do this. Got it. And my wife was mm -hmm. in the audience mm -hmm. and going, <laughs> Come on, Jim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good idea. Yeah. But it was Oprah's. <laughs> yes. Within 30 minutes of that broadcast, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. number eight in the world. Yes. Wow. That's, that's how popular yes. Oprah is in the world. And she keeps repeating the program yes, yes. because she found that it was so right. interesting. Mm. She said to the audience, there was a studio audience, yes. how many of you have problems sleeping? Mm. And nearly every yeah. hand went up. Sure. And she said, what? Yes. You know, Dr. Moss, mm -hmm. why is sleep de deprivation so detrimental? Yes. And I said, it makes you tired, mm -hmm. stupid, yeah. And it shortens your life. Other than that. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. right sure. And so, thanks to Oprah, mm. it did very well. Now, yes. that doesn't last forever. Yes. Or I would have bought a mansion, mm. <laughs> not just cool. a little starter uh -huh. house. Cool, yes. But I, thank you for asking. No, no, I also like that book. And thank you. Yes. Fast forward 25 years. If you were to write a revised edition of the book, is there anything you'd like to add? There used to be maybe one article about sleep in mm -hmm. the popular press yes. or in a journal. Mm -hmm. Maybe one a year and then it became maybe one or two a month. Mm -hmm. You can't open a newspaper today on any given day yes. without seeing an article on mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's due to people like yourself who have yes. come into the field mm -hmm. and started to do re research. Mm -hmm. um, some of it they don't publish because it's proprietary for the company who's trying to yes. sell, for example, a good mattress. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's but a lot of it is shared. Yes. And uh, so if I was to write something today, mm -hmm. I've written another sleep book already after Power Sleep. Yes. And if I was to write another one today, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that we didn't know mm -hmm. when I wrote my second book. Yes. And they would be included. Mm -hmm. But the core is still the same. Mm. Go to bed and get up at the same time, yes. Monday through Monday, including right. the weekends. Mm -hmm. You don't have one biological circadian rhythm mm -hmm. for the work week or the school week and the weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Your body has to know when to go to sleep mm -hmm. and when to wake up. Yes. Uh, we now know the detrimental effects mm -hmm. of caffeine, mm -hmm. even yes. decaf. Oh, uh, even coffee. decaf. Oh, yes. Oh, and God. any, mm -hmm. even decaf, Yes. after mm. two in the afternoon, mm. has a long enough half-life to affect your sleep by as much mm. as an hour. Oh, I didn't know that. The mm -hmm. use of media. Yes. Uh, late at night, mm -hmm. like television, mm -hmm. iPads, yes. Kindles, right. it's all blue daylight spectrum like. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll delay sleep onset by as much as an hour. Yes. Uh, there are things that we know cognitively. Mm -hmm. uh, I did invent the term power nap, the concept yes. of power, power nap. nap. Yes. And uh, we teach people mm -hmm. how, when, and why to power nap. Yes. And it's not just to get you through the rest mm -hmm. of the day. So many more things happen right. to your brain yes. when you take the time mm -hmm. to power nap. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get around and Jill and I mm -hmm. publish this book, which yes. might be a year and a half from now, mm -hmm. uh, it'll probably be already out of date. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about power nap, a term coined by you became highly popular. So as someone who first brought up the Tom, can you teach us how to power nap? Sure. Mm -hmm. All of us have a midday dap in alertness. We're awake during the day and asleep at night, mm -hmm. but between one and three in the afternoon, the circadian rhythm drops a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get drowsy. Now, a lot of people say we get drowsy because we've had a big lunch right. or we've had some alcohol. Mm -hmm. Those things only exacerbate mm -hmm. the sleepiness that's already in our body. Oh. If we weren't sleepy mm -hmm. because of sleep deprivation, if yes. we were sleeping adequately, mm -hmm. that dip is very, very minor. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get rid of the dip by going out and exercising. Yes. But if you have caffeine, mm -hmm. or Coke, or something like that, mm -hmm. in that midday dip in alertness, yes. that it's not really a good solution because then you're not going to sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do something. If you want to get through that period, you can go outside at work and have a little walk or mm -hmm. do a little bit of yoga or yes. something like that. Mm -hmm. But most people like to shut their eyes. Mm -hmm. I coined the term power nap because yes. people would, if they didn't time themselves mm -hmm. or have somebody to wake them up, they'd be yes. so tired right. that they might sleep for 60 mm -hmm. minutes or so. Yes. So I defined a power nap. Mm -hmm. All you need mm -hmm. is anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes at the most to, to regain enough alertness to get you through the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. If you go over 30, yes. you're going to go into deep sleep. Mm -hmm. So if you're 40 or 50 minutes mm -hmm. into your power nap, yes. when you wake up mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. you're going to be groggy for the next hour or two. Right. So either it's less than 30, yeah, right. or it's an entire REM cycle, which means 90 minutes. Now, most of us can't fall asleep at work for 90 minutes, but 10 or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. like putting your head down on the desk, yeah. you might not be lucky enough to be in an environment where they supply pods yes, like Google right. does for uh, the yeah. workers, which are soundproof little chambers yeah, where you can right. go for 15 uh, minute power nap. Right. Uh, but put your head down, try to get comfortable. You don't have to fall fully asleep. Uh, right? yes. 10 or 15 minutes mm -hmm. will do. Now, if Jake the boss comes by mm -hmm. and your head is down, let yeah. me give you a little bit of a hint. Right. Instead of when the boss taps you on the mm -hmm. shoulder and is saying, you know, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Before you raise that head, yes. just say fairly loudly, mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> and then raise your head and say, Boss, what can I do for yeah. you? Great. Now, a lot of people are working yeah. in corporations uh -huh. where they have an infirmary. Right. And those beds are not always occupied. So I'm telling people if they're really tired, maybe they don't feel all that well, call down to the infirmary and say, You've got four or five beds down there. Can I just borrow that okay. for 10 minutes? Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, I, I left something out in my car in the mm -hmm. parking lot, and they disappear. Yes. <laughs> Go to their car right. for 10 or 15 minutes yes. and take a little nap. Mm -hmm. Or they go into the bathroom stall mm -hmm. 
and there's, they, they stay there for 15 minutes. Yeah. And so there, there are escape mechanisms. Mm -hmm. The modern day corporation mm -hmm. uh, at first is shy about putting in these napping pods because they think if that gets in the newspaper, the yes. public is going to think we have lazy people working mm -hmm. here. Well, everybody is tired. Yes, right. We wake up tired. By noon, where most of us are tired, but by one or two in the afternoon again, we're tired mm -hmm. not because of the heavy meal, not because of alcohol, yes. which will make us bored and restless, mm -hmm. but if we're sleep deprived, yes. it'll trigger, it. trigger fatigue. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people like Salvador Dali, the famous artist, uh, who said, uh, well, the way I wake myself up is I hold a spoon in my hand, mm -hmm. and when I lose muscle tonus, the spoon mm -hmm. clanks on the floor, and yeah. that wakes me up. Uh -huh. uh, but sometimes you don't lose muscle tonus uh -huh. until maybe 40 or 50 minutes yes. into, that, yes. into that nap. Now, there are people mm -hmm. who claim that they are very short sleepers yes. and don't need a lot of sleep. Right, right. Edison was famous mm -hmm. for claiming sleep is a waste of time, and uh, I just, you know, maybe I get two yes. or three hours a night. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. we have pictures mm -hmm. of Edison yes. flat out uh, yes. lying on a lab bench right. several times during the middle of the day mm -hmm. getting power naps. Ah, uh, it's a power so, nap. Right, yeah, right. so he would call it today. Uh. He, I hadn't invented the term, but he would call it, right. uh, I was just thinking or whatever, yes. but he was power napping. Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that does happen. But the advantage of power naps, yes. not only does it give you a second wind to mm -hmm. get through the rest of the day, mm -hmm. but we find that creativity, creative problem mm -hmm. solving, mm -hmm. uh, cognition, reaction time, are all enhanced mm -hmm. with as little as a 10 minute power nap. Yeah, so after having a power nap, people can might, uh, get some solutions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, things they've been thinking about, yes. engineering problems, yes. accounting problems, mm -hmm. they're less likely to make mistakes later mm -hmm. in the afternoon, they're more alert, they'll have less accidents. Yes. And uh, research has shown that, mm -hmm. that creative and critical problem solving are much enhanced okay. as well as your immunity to viral, infe viral infection mm -hmm. by a power nap. Great, so if someone wants to solve a problem, it can be better for them to have a power nap. Yeah, or mm -hmm. better yet, have a great night's sleep because ah, right. during REM sleep, yes. which happens every 90 minutes mm -hmm. during the night, mm -hmm. in successive periods, mm -hmm. uh, getting longer and longer as the night yes. progresses, yes. many, many things have been solved. DNA, the problem mm -hmm. of DNA was yes. solved. The periodic table mm -hmm. was solved. Yes. Uh, many, many inventions, literature, mm -hmm. music competitions, yes came to people during REM sleep. Mm, got it, yes, perfect answer, yes. And I also talk about sleep tracker. Yes. Nowadays, uh, nowadays, many wearable devices such as Apple Watch can track your sleep. If you use properly, can these devices aid sleep? Jake, that is a super question. Mm -hmm. One out of five individuals mm -hmm. today yes. in advanced societies mm -hmm use actigraphy. Oh. They have some sort of a device, some mm -hmm. sort of a watch typically, mm -hmm. to measure their sleep. Mm -hmm. The problem is most of those devices make an erroneous assumption. Mm -hmm. They measure movement. movement. They assume yes. that if you're moving, mm -hmm. you're awake. Ah. And if you're not moving, yes. you're asleep. Mm -hmm. Jake, nothing could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. We move an average of 60 to 70 times a night oh, during right. our sleep. Yes, right. The only accurate way mm -hmm. to measure mm -hmm. sleep and the stages of sleep mm -hmm. with a tracker, tracker is to get, mm -hmm. and I'm not an employee, darn it, mm -hmm. <laughs> to get an eye watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that has an algorithm where they're actually mm -hmm. measuring brainwave activity. Yeah. Oh, cool. So in the sleep lab, mm -hmm. we have an array of as many as 30 mm -hmm. electrodes, mm -hmm. but the most important one for measuring the depth of sleep, mm -hmm. the stages of sleep, whether you're awake or not, yes. are two really 
brain waves and mm -hmm. eye movements. Mm -hmm. Well, the Apple Watch has solved that problem. Yes. But there is one more issue, mm -hmm. and it's called orthosomnagree. Yes. It's actually a sleep disorder mm -hmm. caused by people mm -hmm. paying attention too much, too much. to their sleep. You they know, oh my God, I, I, I didn't sleep mm. seven and three quarters hours. Yes. I must be tired. Yes. It can make your sleep worse. Right. So if you're having a problem with mm -hmm. sleep, get a tracker, see how bad the problem it is, share it with a clinic, mm -hmm. and there are thousands of these clinics. Right. But be very careful mm -hmm. what clinic you go to. Mm -hmm. You've got to go to a clinic where the person running the clinic has mm -hmm. passed mm -hmm. the American Academy of Sleep Medicine's yes. test mm -hmm. of your ability to diagnose mm -hmm. sleep disorders. Most physicians yes. without training in sleep medicine mm -hmm. can diagnose maybe five or six mm -hmm. sleep problems yes. like insomnia, narcolepsy, sleep oh, apnea. Right. There are 89 sleep disorders. 89. 89. Wow, it's a lot. Some of which <laughs> are fairly recently discovered. Yes. People always ask me the same question. Uh -huh. What's 89? What's, eight, <laughs> what, what, what's recent? Well, right. sleep eating. Yes. Not sleepwalking has been around a long uh -huh, time. Uh -huh. Eating during your sleep, oh. raiding the refrigerator, wow. and not knowing about it. Uh, it's the next morning, sleep disorders, right. eating raw lamb chops, mm, mm. Uh, <laughs> refrigerating the sorority yeah. refrigerator, while you're having, sleeping, and right. walk completely while you're doing, <laughs> yeah, while you're sleep, cutting yeah. food, wow. and not having any recollection mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Sleep texting. Sleep texting? Texting. Students will say, why did you text me at 3 oh, o'clock this morning? Really? I yeah. didn't text you. Oh, yes, you did. Here <laughs> well, it is. Yeah. And it starts out mm. in appropriate yeah. grammar, Got and it. then it disintegrates wow. in the message. And I guess one of the last mm -hmm. ones to be discovered is sleep sex. Oh, really? Now, I remember, I'll give you an example. Yes. A woman comes into my office mm -hmm. and she says, Dr. Moss, mm -hmm. I have a problem, mm -hmm. a very personal problem. Mm -hmm. I have a question. My husband is a great lover. Mm -hmm. He takes his time, he's gentle. Yes. I said, this is a problem? <laughs> <laughs> this is fabulous. Yeah, she says, well, thing. you don't understand. I'm wondering about something. I said, what are you wondering about? He says, while he's making love to me, mm -hmm. he's snoring loudly. Oh, he doesn't remember? No? He's, can you have sex wow. in your sleep? Wow. And I said, I'm afraid you can. Wow. I've never <laughs> heard about that. And he's not even aware. Mm, not even aware. Morning. He's wow. not aware. Yes. Unfortunately, mm. there are some very sad cases about mm. this. Yes. Because people, case histories have been found to mm. be visiting an old college classmate mm. and in the middle of the night, uh, he goes in and tries to have sex with mm. his classmate's young mm -hmm. teenage daughter, mm -hmm. completely unaware, oh. completely asleep. Wow. Mm. And so there are problems. Yes. Also, there are people who will attack mm -hmm. others, attack others in the middle of the night, will pull a revolver on their yeah. dear beloved wife, mm -hmm. thinking they're dreaming of somebody, mm. robbers coming into wow. the house and kill somebody. Oh and the question is, were they conscious of this, or mm -hmm. was this completely an act yes. of uh, being in, in right. sleep? Yeah. And these have come into the courts. Mm -hmm. And what the courts want to know is, is this person a sleepwalker? Yes. Does he have REM sleep behavior mm -hmm. disorder where he is really asleep, and yes. yet can there are case histories of people going down to mm -hmm. their kitchen? Yes. And putting all their best china, mm -hmm. not into the dishwasher, but mm -hmm. into the clothes washer, clothes washer. and <laughs> ruining wow. their dishes, yes. and uh, going to the grocery store mm -hmm. in the middle of the night and buying 50 boxes of 50 Kellogg's box? cornflakes, Corn. getting on an airplane at Los Angeles International Airport, yes. and going halfway across the country before they wake up and realize where they are. Yes. And uh, 
people can't believe that this yeah. is happening, yeah. but it does happen, mm -hmm. and it also happens mm -hmm. where, in one case, mm -hmm. somebody in the middle of the night was out fixing the mm -hmm. pump on his outdoor swimming pool mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona, Yes, and his wife came out to find him, mm -hmm. And she surprised him so much, and he had a knife to cut the tape oh to wrap gosh. the pipe. Yeah. He turned around, stabbed her mm -hmm. multiple times, mm -hmm. and threw her in the swimming pool. Wow. And then went back to bed. Yes. And he was accused of murder. The neighbor mm -hmm. heard the screaming, mm -hmm. called the police. Yes. He went to trial, and he mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm a religious man, I'm a Mormon, I teach Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I was under a lot of stress, but I don't remember a thing. Uh, in this case, the jury found him guilty mm -hmm. because they said, oh, it would have been impossible for him to go down, fix the pool, clean himself up, go back to bed. Yes. It couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. But we know it can happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the juries usually insist on or one of the attorneys that the person be tested for REM sleep behavior disorder. Yes. Or was he faking it? Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing happened with a young man in England mm -hmm. who shot his new bride of a month or so with a shotgun in the middle wow. of the night. Yes. Uh, and he, he was let free. They mm -hmm. said it wasn't his fault. Mm -hmm. The American Arizona co court yes. ruled otherwise because nobody would believe the sleep expert mm -hmm. who said it was possible to do this mm -hmm. and not be awake. Wow. So. You better watch out. Yeah. Oh, boy, <laughs> we have video of, of, of a delightful young, yeah. I'm sorry, older couple, mm -hmm. but delightful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're on camera, and he's describing that every once in a while he has REM sleep behavior mm -hmm. disorder, mm -hmm. uh, which can be mollified by, by certain pills mm -hmm. that you can take mm -hmm. to stop you from moving during the night. But he was literally, and we have films of this, pounding his dear elderly wife in bed going wow. like this, wow. you know, beating her to a yes. bloody pulp yes. without, you know, knowing mm. what he was doing. Yes. And uh, so that can be, uh, or jumping out of a mm. second story window. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there can be issues. Yes. But thank God we know how to solve these problems mm. now wow. through modern sleep medicine. Yes, it's very complicated issue. It is a complicated yeah issue and people yeah. who aren't familiar with the research yes. say this is all nonsense. Right. These people are out to yes. kill somebody. Yes.